Welcome back to the Everything is Bigger in Texas Home Theater Tours. I'm your host, Taterate Cowboy. I'm in Dallas and I've got a really unique home theater to show you and a really unique story. I've got the homeowner here, Rusty. It's good to meet you, man. You too. So first of all, huge props to, to maximizing this space. Uh, I know we were talking earlier, you were saying it's not that big, but man, you've done an excellent job. You've got a, a really killer setup. We're gonna listen to some demos in a little bit. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm excited to hear it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let Rusty take you around the room, show you what he's got, and then we'll sit down and talk about his story because he's got a very, very interesting, unique story that I've never heard before. So Rusty, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your speakers? Sure. All right, we're gonna start up here in the front right. So these are the Klipsch RF822s. Uh, they've got dual eight inch drivers. These I actually purchased off a guy on Facebook Marketplace uh, for 300 bucks for the pair. Um, and then I've got the Klipsch RC622s. Uh, um, they got two six and a half inch drivers. And I bought these off the, this off the same guy for 100 bucks. So, um, you know, trying to starting out here, building my first theater, obviously uh, budget was a concern. So I'm trying to stick within budget and... Uh, and also, the guy was selling a Marantz SR7012 that I'm running all the speakers off of. I bought that from him as well for 700 bucks. I basically cleared out his stock. Um, he was probably replacing everything with uh, monolith stuff. So, um, And then we have the Dayton Audio UM1822s. Uh, this is the Par Parts Express kit. I built these myself. Um, I'd say it took me... Uh, let's say like 20, 25 hours to do both of them. Um, I took some shortcuts from their instructions, um, but they turned out excellent and I'm very pleased with these subwoofers. And I've got these powered by a Behringer NX6000D, which by the way, speaking of the guy I bought all this stuff from, I bought that from him too. So um, he really helped me, helped me. It just found a good deal. Um, moving up to the Atmos speakers, I've got Klipsch uh, R41SAs all around. There's four of them. Uh, these ones also came off Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid like 150. I actually bought them separately, the fronts separately from the back, but I think they were about 150 a pair. So moving on to the rear, to the surrounds, these are the Klipsch R15Ms. Um, and these ones I actually got for free uh, from my boss at work who I work with. So I really appreciate that and I've been very happy with the way they sound as well. So the screen I built myself, this is Seymour Glacier White material. Order the material straight from Seymour um, as well as their Fidelio Velvet. And uh, yeah, I bought the wood, assembled, cut it out, assembled it, built it all myself. Um, I've been very happy with the results. Um, there might be some future upgrades to acoustically transparent, but for now, um, this is what I'm rocking and I've been very happy with it. And then up front, I've got uh, Black Velvet that I actually, um, trying to think of the guy's name on YouTube, Casual Cinema, Casual, I don't remember exactly. I think it's like Casual Cinema File. And uh, he came across this uh, Velvet. Actually, I think he found it on the forums, but it comes from the UK and it's uh, a peel and stick, it comes in a roll. And it's a peel and stick velvet. Um, and so that's what I did here. It was not the easiest to work with, trying to keep it flat and keep the wrinkles out. But luckily it does um, it does hide very well. And, and I love the way it just kind of like, it helps with the, the small space as well, making it feel bigger than it is. Because uh, this back wall, it just kind of disappears. So really, really happy with that. All right, so my center channel, I know some of y'all are gonna notice that it's turned sideways. And the reason for that is um, I was noticing and also measuring within Roo, um, the dispersion horizontally. So when it's turned 
normally. The dispersion is great vertically, but it's not too good horizontally. And with my seat set up here, um, and I measured this with Rue, I was not getting a good frequency response. So turning it this way, now I've got good dispersion in the horizontal plane. Vertically is not as good, but I've got it angled up to account for that and measured in Rue and it's significantly better. So that's why it is the way it is. Alright, before we go any further in this video, just a quick disclaimer. I think you guys know by now I try to provide the highest quality videos possible, but sometimes technical difficulties just went out. And when I set up the next part of this video, the interview, and I set up the camera, I set up the shot, everybody was in frame. But for some reason when I sat down, I guess because I was at an angle, the camera decided to only focus on me instead of the other two people that are in the frame. I didn't notice it until afterwards and it was already too late. We didn't have time to, you know, re-record. Also, it appears the audio that was going into the camera for myself and one of the Rusties, it appears that audio got unplugged somehow. So the only audio that I have of all three of us is from one microphone, laugh mic, on Rusty the homeowner. So I've done my best. I was hesitant whether even to post this part of the video but I know Rusty worked very hard and what I really want you to focus on is his story. Even if you don't watch the video and you just listen to it, please listen to a story because it's incredible. That being said, I will be having both Rusty's on a future live stream and I will allow him to tell his story there again as well. Again, sorry guys, I apologize, Rusty, my bad man, but you know, we got the most important thing <laughs> Part of the video the actual room that stuff looks good but yeah i hope you guys can still enjoy the video all right rusty and rusty <laughs> we got hey. two rusties here uh, uh, on the theater tour so yeah let's talk a little bit about your journey because i know we were talking before and you have a slightly different journey that i've never heard of before so we were talking and rusty was telling me that you moved into this house how long ago august 7th uh like a little over three months ago. Three months ago? Yeah. How long have you been uh, a home theater enthusiast? Enthusiast, I would say maybe about six, eight months. <laughs> I mean, I've always been into it, right? but not to this level. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we were talking. Actually, Rusty, why don't you tell a little bit about the first half, and then I'll let him talk about the second half, about how you know you invited him over, and he was just kind of like, eh, you know, a little yeah. bit reluctant. So we, uh, we've started a group of enthusiasts, the few people that met at M-Wave and started a group and trying to grow the community here locally and just share something that we love. And uh, I've known Rusty for about 10 years and said, I knew he liked like car audio and technology and not that kind of things because we would geek out about that. And I'm like, you got to come hang out with us. Like you, I think you would enjoy yourself. And He's like, okay, well, I'll come listen to your stereo, you know, <laughs> you know like, if you insist, you know, but if you twist my arm, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, so he, he came and hang out, hung out. And I think that was like June of this year yep. and, um, and a, a, a small group of people and just, you know, sharing, sharing what we love. And, uh, after, well, the, the rewarding part to me was, you know, we got to hang out and just have fun, but at the end of it. Uh, was like what Rusty said to me and I'll let you kind of say like recap that like what was your thought after that day? I was just completely mind blown like I had no clue what was possible in home theater until I witnessed that and it was just it was just mind blowing um, and that was just uh, it just hooked me instantly like I, I want this you know <laughs> so and that's for me like that's like it's so rewarding to see like that look on somebody's face when they've experienced something 
they've never experienced before and just like like little kids just so happy the yeah. big grins and like even seeing it last night when we a lot of giggles out. like yeah <laughs> grown men giggling like little children it's just it's so rewarding yeah when they walked out of that room i saw it was i've never seen that at, at my home theater i mean my friends they're used to it they like it but i can't i can't talk to them about home theater like you can but i've also never seen that reaction where people are walking out of your theater literally smiling it's almost like like you're walking out of a, uh, a theater you just saw like an awesome movie mm -hmm. and everybody smile like yeah. everyone that was walking out of your room is smiling so it's that's that was rewarding for me to see yeah so okay so you go to rusty's uh house this rusty yeah and <laughs> you didn't have any of this stuff right no uh, i had my sur rear surrounds okay and then some towers and stuff that are in the living room now but yeah that was it so none of this, none so of this. Four months time, you went from, eh, okay, I'll listen to your stereo to a full blown. Yes. Theater room. Yep. That's very. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody doing that. So that's very unique. So what would you say? What was the, if you can, I don't know if you can pinpoint maybe one thing that really stood out when you went to Rusty's theater where you were like, all right, now I have to, I have to have this in my. my so really, I I'd always kind of been into it. I say kind of because I never. Um, never was into it enough to to even do the research and realize what was possible you know i, I was just used to i had a home theater in a box and a, and a mm -hmm. tv we've all been there um yep the and same. um but honestly being at, at his theater i enjoyed myself like way more than at a commercial movie theater um it's just so much more intense and immersive um and it was just an experience i had never had before and i've always been in there's part of me that's always been a bass head okay. um so i used to be in the car audio and i had uh went through multiple sound systems and built my own boxes and uh, had sundown subs and stuff and okay. you know so there's part of me that's a bass head and then also that was the other thing is i'd never heard bass like that outside of car audio like right. hearing that inside of a house was just ridiculous actually and it was um home theater it was the bass goes lower than car audio. Car audio, you, you don't go get into the single digits. And, uh, or may, I'm sure there's some competition sure some guys, but. Yeah. You're just going to be rattling like crazy. Yeah. Um, but to do that and to do it cleanly to where it still just sounds beautiful. And, uh, yeah, it was just incredible. Um, and it was like, yeah, I just, I'm like, I, I have to do, have this. <laughs> I remember one comment that you had made is you said, like, before you came, you said, I thought this was going to be like an obnoxious, like guy at the red light. <laughs> oh yeah. And he's like, I couldn't believe how smooth and well blended. It's like, he yeah. said it wasn't trashy at all. It was no. very like tasteful, but powerful too. So. It's like, it's like a pair of high end Sennheisers, like. Uh, except you actually have the really low end that the Sennheisers don't, but just the sound is just so crystal clear and, and yeah. balanced. And yeah, so it's not at all, um, you know, just I look at my big subs. It's <laughs> an entire package and it's, uh, and it's a, just sounds beautiful. Really nice frequency response. And Yeah, he, he did a really good job. Like I haven't experienced, I mean, I've heard a lot of stuff at shows. I've heard, you know, some home theaters, but man, having eight, 18s i mean it was just and that's that was the thing it was like i i didn't know that you could i didn't know that some of those movie tracks went that low like if you have like like in my theater it, like it it hits hard and i'm like wow this sounds really good but to hear that it's just there's there's and unless you have that many subs and that size driver i was just blown away like i can't believe that a movie track can sound mm -hmm. like this <laughs> In your home, so I mean, he did an awesome job tuning it. Um, he's got the Crosons in there. Yeah. So, yeah, let's talk about your subs because you have kind of the same, a couple of the same subs that, yep. that he has, right? So the ones he has in the back for the near field, uh, I've got the exact same ones okay. for my for my mains up front. Um, and so before this, I had uh, two Klipsch, uh, I believe they're called like SA tens or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, not very good at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had them behind the seats because up front, they just sounded horrible. Um, and so that was another thing after. So I started the, the, this process, um, and I was, went through it and was acquiring things okay. and 
I'm not sure if that was like the right order, but that was the order I wanted to do. Right. So I guess what I'm getting at is I got the towers, I got the projector, I got the Marantz, all that before I got the subs. And I actually got everything in this room. And like I said, we've only been here for three and a half oh. months. <laughs> so I got everything in this room and operational. Um, and it was just like, this is, this is just not, not what I'm, uh, envisioning. Okay. So, um, then, yeah, so the subs, the reason I chose these, uh, did some research and obviously kind of my whole premise on this particular uh, build was I wanted to keep it, um, budget friendly, right. you know, but I also don't want to compromise. You're going to compromise obviously, Everybody but, um, I, I also want to have a great experience. Um, and I know a lot of people will get caught up in that and, 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 you know, think, Oh, I could never, I could never spend that. I could never afford that. Or I could, yeah, that's, I just can't do it. And it's, uh, I want it like, yes, you can. Um, it takes time. Man. It takes you time. Up. You gotta, you yeah. Know, we were talking about the yesterday, like one thing, cause I don't want to say I've always been a snob, but I've always hated you buying you stuff. I've always, everything that yeah. I bought was always new, but when I got to home theater, home theater is one of the things where you can actually buy you stuff and it's still really good. Like yeah. amps will last a long time. Receivers will last a long time. If you buy some good speakers. I mean, yeah. you can pass these things down to your kids if you want. So yeah. you guys don't always have to buy everything new. You don't have to think, well, I can't buy it new. I'm not going to be able to get what I want. And there's deals all kinds, all, all yeah. the time. So many deals out there and you can save a, a ton. And then also um, doing DIY stuff, you can right. save a ton. So that's, I went this route because, um, well, one, I'd heard them before and I knew that they were excellent. Um, and, uh, just comparing the cost to, uh, performance per dollar, these things are outstanding. So, um, that's why I went with them and, and, you know, that saves a ton of money too. So, um, uh, yeah, built those. I think I'm in about amp included. That was, for two eighteens and the Behringer all built materials and everything for seventeen hundred bucks for wow. both. That's uh that's an incredible for two eighteens. For two eighteens, yeah. yeah. And, and the six thousand really, really, really hard. D. So you, you bought those DIY, you did them you did all your stuff. Yep. How long did it take you to build those those subs? Uh the box the boxes eh, they took me about two and a half, three days. <laughs> <laughs> you must but, have been uh, booking it on that, man. That's yeah, I um I didn't use the uh, method, you know, the instructions on parts express website. Okay. I, uh, so I, sp pretty handy. I sped it up. Yeah. Because uh, it was like, uh, put some glue, clamp it and let it dry. No nails. And it's just like, yeah. man, I can speed this up. Let me get a Brad nailer. Um, okay. really. So basically I put, would clamp down. I would put a piece together, n clamp it, nail it, let it sit for a minute to let the glue tack. Okay. Then move on to the next piece and basically just built it all. I had them built in one evening. Wow. That's all incredible. put together um, and then clamped them. I borrowed some clamps from my neighbor uh, and then clamped them all down and let them sit overnight, you know, clamped them from each direction. And they were, came back the next day, they're solid and uh, then went to sanding the next day and then the third day painted them. Nice. Yep. And then, so what drivers are you using for those? Is, is it? GSG audio or GSG also or no, these are the Dayton audio UM Dayton, okay. 1822, the Ultimax. Okay. Uh, and then what kind of paint did you, so it's a Duratec finish. Uh, it's, it was a roll on finish. You can do, you can do all kinds of stuff, but yeah, it was just a roll on Duratec finish. Um, and that I would say definitely if you, when you're first applying it, it can be really thick and just pro tip, just add a little water. Um, yeah, if you don't, cause it, it can be just right out of the can. It can be hard to work with and to spread out. So it's just to thin it out just a little bit enough to work with. And yeah. It helps. And it also helps the texture not be so when it's thicker, it's kind of like you, you're using a sponge roller. So it kind of lifts up the uh, paint a little bit, like gives it some texture, but it, it was almost too textured for me. But what I ended up doing to, uh, cause I didn't thin it, this was, you know, uh, what I ended up doing to smooth that out was just in between 
I had to do two coats to yeah. get full coverage. So in between the first and the second coat, I just took, um, I believe it was, it was a really fine grit sandpaper because I didn't want to take any off or scratch it. So I think I had like maybe three or 400 grit Okay. and just did a light, very light sand just to knock the, you know, the, the roughest parts down and then did another coat and got it where I liked it. Well, it looks, it looks professional, man. When I first walked in, I, I was looking at them from outside and it was a little bit dark and I was like, those prolicin subs or, and I was like. Uh, I'm pretty sure those aren't for listen, but then I was like, oh yeah, he's got the same ones that, yeah. that, that yeah. Rusty has. So what are the, what are the plate amps that you guys are using? On these? Behringer NX, they're not plate amps. They're, uh, mine's back here in the closet. Oh, that's right. You yeah. Say that. Okay. And it's a Behringer NX 6000D. Okay. Um, they're great amps, but it does not put out 6,000 watts. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't need that for what, for what, I, what you're paying and what I'm getting. It's perfect for for what i need them for yeah and, and your room size which brings yeah. me to my next question so what is the room size because you have maximized this complete room like when you when you walk in here it doesn't feel small yeah like it doesn't feel small at all i mean you've got a, a really big screen which we'll talk about but what's your what's your room size dimensions so it's um 10 foot four inches wide okay so that's almost exactly mine's 10 10 inches 10 feet Exactly. So it's yeah. just, just a little bit bigger than mine. And then lengthwise, I'm at 11 foot, four inches wide okay. or length. Well, not counting this, this a little, little cubby, in the, cubby in the back, but yeah, to the back wall here. And the eight foot ceilings. Eight foot ceilings. Yeah. So basically, so this was basically a bedroom, right? Correct. Okay. You would never know it, man. Like the only reason I know is because when you open that door and I'm like, that's got to be a closet. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you turn the closet, which we'll try to get some B-roll in there. You have yep. your, your rack in there. What's in there? So, um, well, I'll just start from the bottom and work my way up. So, okay. there's a HTVC that I built. Okay. Um, running Mad VR on that. Uh, running Cody, making KV, um, Plex. Um, move up from there. One shelf's got some networking equipment, ubiquity stuff. Uh, the next shelf has got... Uh, Panamax, okay. uh, power conditioner, um, the Behringer, and then the next shelf, I've got the Marantz SR7012. Okay. That's a, a little more info about that. So that's a, uh, it's got 11 channels of processing and nine channels amp for amplification. So you can you can pre-outs. You can use it. Correct. It does have pre-outs. Um, so if I wanted to add like rear surrounds to make, turn this into a seven channel setup, I could. Okay. And with an external ask, what's your what's your speaker configuration 5.2.4 5 .2 .4. 5 .2 .4. Okay. yeah um and then other than that there's the jvc and x7 at the very top and then i've got a xbox series x in there and an apple tv 4k okay and where'd you get that projector from I actually got it from uh <laughs> this guy right here <laughs> so you see man the community you can always get stuff from yep. your friends you know maybe if they're upgrading or something so that's that's really cool that you know you have that community where you can say, Hey, you know, yeah, I'm getting rid of this. Do you, you know, mm -hmm. work a deal or something on that? Like, yeah. well, and there's always somebody like at a different stage of their journey. Right. And so there's always room to, you know, buy, sell and trade, trade yeah. gear. And the NX7, that's no slouch. No, so, <laughs> you got a good deal. On that. Yeah. <laughs> very, very, very pleased with the NX7. Okay. Um, so, you uh looks like you made a little little cutout in the in, yep. the in the closet for your projector which is really really nice i really like that it's really nice and seamless it even though it's still in the room it's not really in the room correct and it's it's quiet in here man like yeah. i had it on earlier we couldn't hear the projector um i don't know what it sounds like you know when everything is running but i mean you can't hear not it. any louder than it was yeah mm -hmm. so that's yeah i i can make it a little bit louder by going to highland but it doesn't get much louder yeah, than what it is you have, you have a closet so you can close it and it's not correct do you have a, are you doing theater glass or are you just going straight through so it's straight through you see that uh that uh flange okay, yeah and then i put uh so the projectors pushed right up against that and there's a gasket on the flange to help seal it the projector up okay. against did, the flange you did all, all this yourself yeah i did the yeah just started at the front i did the the velvet i did the screen i did the yeah. subs i did the Changed out all the plugs to black. Uh, Question. So yeah. you must be like a trade worker by day. Right? <laughs> no, actually, I'm not. Uh, Have you ever been a trade worker? Not professionally. Okay. So, <laughs> but you're, you know, I know you're good with your hands and 
you built all this stuff and you've done a ton of really good DIY. Do you feel like you're missing out on anything? No, guess, not at all. <laughs> I look at this, uh, you know, the room. It looks professional. It looks professional. Like, obviously you have an eye for detail and so you've done a good job at making it very clean and neat. But like, I would have never guessed that you had never built subs before in your life. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they don't look jank. Your screen, you built yourself. Oh yeah, and we'll talk. First about time that. ever building the screen. And yep. Like, <laughs> it, it doesn't. It's like if nobody, if I didn't know some of this stuff from yeah. our conversations, like I would have never guessed. So <laughs> I don't feel like. I think sometimes we all feel like you say you didn't really want to buy n n anything other than new at right. first. And we always feel like a little bit of that, but I mean, really and truly, um, you can DIY stuff and not really be missing out on correct. Or maybe very like it, little, if anything. I you can, know. yeah, you can. You'd be surprised at what you can achieve if you just. You really got to be smart about it. Um, but yeah, what you can achieve uh, buying used, doing DIY. Um, you know, obviously there's some things that you're still going to, still going to hurt. Uh, so like the, the projector is still, that's still going to be yeah. pricey. You just, yeah. you can't get around it. Uh, well, I, there's other ways you could get around it as far as you don't have to have a JVC, you know, you could go with something and, and mad VR helps a lot. So, um, but yeah, no, you, just put your mind to it and, uh, and be smart about it. And you could be surprised at what you can achieve and a lot of hard work and a lot, a lot of hard, hard i will say that was <laughs> when you're doing diy it's yeah a lot of hard work it's time and it's, consuming you make yeah. mistakes yeah and you have to go back and correct it so. and this wasn't even all like manual labor a lot of hard work it was a lot i mean i couldn't even tell you hundreds of hours <laughs> of research um, and that's what i was going to say i'm sure like you didn't just oh i'm gonna go to do like you have to do some research i mean yeah. there may be some things where you're like oh you know i can do that but yeah, yeah. you got to do research and that's kind of what i did because i mean you're but i don't think i would ever attempt to build speakers just because i don't i don't i just want to buy it, and <laughs> it up. but i mean i i built my riser yeah i went on youtube and i looked at it and you know my dad's always been in like the woodwork doing stuff so i knew a, yeah. I, I could knew a little bit but like that, I was like, oh man, I can buy the supplies and, and do that myself. It's going to take more time and it's not going to look perfect, but I saved a ton of money yeah. and I mounted all my speakers. I had them pre-wired. So you can do a lot of stuff yourself, yeah. save a lot of money, but also, and I'm sure you guys would agree, like every time I walk in my room, it just, I feel, it feels more rewarding that like, man, I did I this myself. This. Yes. Very, like, very much so. Yeah, it may not look, but mine definitely doesn't look as professional as yours. But I'm like, I did this myself. It sounds good. It works. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, there's there's a certain level of accomplishment where you're like, man, like, I, I feel like it makes me appreciate it more. Oh, yeah. It, once I finally got uh, the subs built and then I, then I spent the last several, like, month, basically, every single weekend calibrating. And that was that was a real challenge. Uh, there's just a steep learning curve when it comes to like using Rue and, and doing the EQs. And, um, however, when I finally like got it done, I sat down and, uh, decided to watch like an entire movie, <laughs> not five minute or little clips. Let's watch a movie. And, uh, it was just like surreal. Like I just sitting here going, wow. Like I built this, yeah. <laughs> like I actually, Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a good fit. I'm sure you, you, I mean, all that stuff that you did, it took you, how, how long did it take you to build your, to, like from start to finish? Uh, I would say about three years from the time I moved into That's the house. He did it in time. three months. Um, <laughs> I went through many evolutions of theater cause I would buy something, try it for a while and then redo it and change things. So it took me a while and it took me visiting some other people's theaters to like yeah. kind of figure out what I liked and didn't like. Um, so that was really valuable. But, um, Hey, so you said that you finally like watched a full movie. So yeah. how often do you actually use your theater? <laughs> well, it will be a lot now, uh, moving forward, but well, I was in my theater all the time, but yeah, actually using it, it wasn't well in the three, yeah, three and a half months I've been building it. I think me and my wife have watched like one or two movies, Wow. <laughs> but 
But that's because I've just been working on it yeah, this entire you got time. Kid, so yeah, I mean, you got priorities. So okay, so from right now, before we got here, when did you actually finish it? Like, when was it complete to where you're like, I don't have to do anything else? Last weekend. Last weekend. Well, it was room was all complete, but calibration that was my last thing to finish, and uh, last Sunday finished it. You did. You did an amazing job, man. Like literally, like if if you didn't tell me, I would have thought like you paid someone to come in here and hire. Yeah. I mean. Just even the 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 black velvet, mm-hmm. like because I have some yeah. black velvet on my wall. It doesn't look like like it's just perfect. Like it's lined up. Everything is is seamless. Yeah. And yeah. So why don't you talk about that? Because you said before you before you put that up there, you noticed a massive difference, right? For sure. So actually, I kind of did things out of order. I should have did <laughs> the paint first. That's what I should have done. Um, but I hate painting, and I wanted to do all the fun stuff. So. Um, <laughs> I did the first, I had the screen up there, just, uh, this room was white, white walls, white ceiling, just the screen. <laughs> yeah. And it was atrocious, but I knew that. And, right. uh, I was, it was in process, but it was nice to be able to see what each thing, uh, how it affected it. And, uh, so I did the velvet first and that made a big difference, like really big difference, but it still, um, it still was I was really struggling with the reflections. So, so you did the velvet first, and you still had white walls. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. White walls and white ceiling with the velvet first. Okay. And it did help, but it didn't help as much as I thought it would. Right. Um. And then, well, obviously, and then the blackout curtains. That was, but I did that right at the get go because I'm. I knew you had to have light control. Yeah. Um. So. Those I've been very happy with. I mean, it's you turn it off and it's like pitch, pitch black. black. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, but the one I was very, very surprised with was the paint. Once I did the paint, it was like, wow, just transform the picture. Um, so definitely don't have white walls. (laughs) That's, that's horrible. That was the first thing. So that's why I, I absolutely hate painting. Yeah. And so, but I wanted to make sure that the front half where my screen was surrounding walls and the ceiling was all black. So I did that. And yeah. Even though I still have white walls in the back, like when I turn out the lights, yeah. it's it's black. I mean, yeah, I can get a little bit of reflection. It doesn't reflect on the screen, right. like, you know, the white walls. But yeah. as soon as I did that and I and then I put the black velvet, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, it's like the contrast huge. just improved. And it also, like you mentioned that earlier, it also made the room feel bigger. I yeah. wasn't expecting that. I was like, man, it has a different feel right. in the room. Definitely. So your screen, you... You did the screen yourself, right? Correct. Okay, so what? How did you do that? What materials did you use? I um, <laughs> I ordered samples after samples, a whole big stack of samples, <laughs> um, and I would just tape them all up on the wall here and and trying to figure out which material I wanted, um, and that the Seymour Glacier White was just so crisp, um, because we are at a pretty short throw distance here, twelve feet. Um, and a lot of the other materials were having, uh, shimmer and and sparkle and, or you could see some texture and, uh, this one was just, uh, the glacier white's just so smooth. Um, so chose that, uh, ordered it. You can just order it right on their website. They ship you, you tell them the link you need, um, and they ship you a roll. And then I ordered the, the velvet for the frame is different than the velvet on the walls. I ordered that. It's the Fidelio Velvet and uh, got that shipped here. And then from there, trip to Home Depot, get the lumber. It's staples and uh, um, there, there's definitely things I would do differently uh, right. second time around. So like I would use, I didn't realize till talking with Rusty that there's a, I would use grommets, but mm-hmm. at the time okay. it seemed like complicated. No, apparently it's it's not a, nowhere near as complicated as you think to, to grommet your screen. Um, but yeah, I would not use staples. Uh, <laughs> I would, I would try to use grommets because I think I'm I already noticed some settling over time. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, but it's, I don't have any wrinkles or anything, but yeah, there's, there's, there's no wrinkles. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it looks great. So what, what size is the screen? 110 inch diagonal at 16 by nine. Um, I went 16 by nine just because at this throw distance, I am, uh, width limited. Okay. not height. So basically it's like, if I can, I can display this 16 by nine image. Why 
not have it, right. you know? So if I went to two, three, five, I'm just giving up that height on the screen. Um, and, and I can't, this is as wide as this, the, I can make the projector. I, yeah. A smidge wider, but I got to leave room for the towers, so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the kind of the same. I was really glad because at my parents' house, I had the same screen. And I think at my parents' house, it was either 11 and a half or 12 feet wide. Yeah. So I lost a couple of feet. And I was like, man, I really hope my, my screen still fits. And I have, I mean, it's, it like, I can't go any wider. Yeah. So it's, I have a hundred inch screen and it, and it works. I had to lift it up a little bit once I built the riser just because of the front. And right. Road, but yeah, I mean, you did, you did an excellent job. Thank you. So you're doing uh you're doing a home theater PC and a man of your art. Tell us a little bit about that, why you went that route. So, um, well, obviously cost is a, was a number one because if I would have loved to have just gone, uh, mad VR envy and, uh, kaleidoscape. Yeah. Um, could just because, okay. So I, I, I couldn't do that for budget purposes, but so started building the home theater PC because it's just like, I didn't want to deal with discs. I, I hate discs. And, um, so that was the only way to get the, well, first, hang on, let me back up. I'm like, does this, does this really, people make this big fuss about bit rate and everything and, and streaming. Does this really matter? So I took an identical 4k okay. Blu-ray, played it, found the same movie 4k streaming. And I think it was, uh, it's a star Wars, uh, rise of the rise, rise of Skywalker. Of okay. Um, played it back to back on Disney plus and for, and it was like just massive difference. There's a difference. Some picture say, well, you know. picture. Yeah. P the bit actually the, what I wasn't expecting was it was audio. Yeah. The audio is, really it was like impressed. massive difference in audio there. I was hearing things in the Blu-ray track that I didn't even yeah. hear in the streaming track. So it's like, yeah, it's worth it. Um, and then, uh, so. I appreciate the simple fact that you just like did a simple test. Yeah. And figured it that. out for yourself. Like, That's your own research instead yeah. of going and going. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But a yeah. lot of times people go, hey, go online. What's what's better, streaming? or And it's like, yeah. well, why don't you do it yourself? Right. You've, I know you've got access to it. You've probably got some streaming service. Do it yourself. And you be the to judge. Mm -hmm. Don't just rely Correct. on other people. I mean, it's nice to get mm -hmm. other people's opinions about certain things because you learn. But with stuff like that, you really need to experience it yourself. Well, maybe you would have watched the streaming version and be like, oh, that because, you know, some people are more sensitive to right. things than others. And maybe you're like, well, that's this is completely fine for me. Well, then save yourself all that money <laughs> and time. Um, so, yeah, do the test. Do it yeah. yourself. That's 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 really smart that you wouldn't did now. Did you just decide to do that yourself, or did you ask people? Or you were just like, I want to see what this looks like. Or, I know it was it was the so want to deal with the discs and stuff. Yeah, being on the forums um, and doing all this research, um, that was just one thing I'd came across. But there was not like a good, uh, hey, here's there wasn't a good. Uh, there's not you can't go to YouTube and look that up right? because YouTube streaming quality, how can you compare the two? <laughs> if someone like made a video about it, it's something you had to test for yourself. So that's, I just really wanted to, before I went down the rabbit hole of HTPC and all that entails, I wanted to see like, is this really all everyone says it is? And yeah, it, it really is that much better but to me. It, but but when you did it for yourself, you there was like no doubt in your mind. It sounds like yeah. it was obvious. You know, oh, this is for me. You knew yeah. right away. Well, because I'm not gonna go to all this and building this 110 inch screen, beautiful 4K JVC projector and um, it's subpar put quality, yeah, get you know. subpar quality. Um, you know, outside in the living room on the TV out there, I don't notice that big of a difference between the two. But in here, it is like obvious yeah um so uh, to me that was a non-starter to to stream you know obviously i'll still stream every now and then right. in here if it's just like i really want to watch this and i don't have the blu-ray yet yeah you know I'll, or if it's like an original show or, or yeah shows show. like you know mandalorian whatever right. uh, I, i'll watch streaming in here and it because it's still a good experience it's still a good experience it's just, it's just not as good i'm the same yeah. way like uh -huh. i'm always gonna as long as discs are available i'm always gonna buy discs yeah the only streaming service that i'm subscribed to 
I have Amazon Prime, but that's I have Amazon Prime for the two day shipping. Not yeah, Amazon exactly. Media, but it comes with that. But I right. only subscribe to Disney Plus, and I literally just reactivated my subscription because I really wanted to watch uh, the God's uh, Monarch. Yeah. But after I don't remember what it was, maybe it was after Ahsoka or something. I canceled it. And I'm like, I, I I don't need this. So yeah. I think streaming definitely has a place, and I will say it's other than kaleidoscape it's to me the benefit is it's convenient yeah it's convenient you don't have to worry with discs or worry about discs and all that stuff but the quality is and a lot of people say well you know internet's getting better and i'm like yes it is getting better in certain parts of the country or the world but in order for everyone to have the exact same experience to have the exact same bit rate like that's i don't see that happening anytime soon and yeah. audio is always going to be the biggest thing that gets compressed. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Which to me, it didn't make sense at first because I'm like, audio's. I would think like, the video would be. Yeah. yeah. But I think um, I was reading uh, an article and basically, well, your average um, homeowner or not homeowner, but anyone who has a TV, they don't. They're not going to notice the audio as much as they're going to notice the video. So they're taking most of that bandwidth that they're allowed. I think it's like 25 megabit or something for, for 4K streams. They're taking most of that bandwidth and using it for the video. Yeah. And so the audio gets like, here's your, here's what you got, man. Make it work. <laughs> yeah, because most people that are watching it are not like us. They're watching it on, we were talking about the yeah. They're watching on the TV. They might have a sound bar. Right. Other than that, they're just using the, the TV speakers and they're okay with it. But it's yeah. also kind of the thing where they're okay. Are they okay with it because they don't care or are they okay with it because they, don't they haven't experienced <laughs> it? Because it's like yeah. you go over to your house and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that this could sound like this. Yeah. Even if it, even streaming. Yeah. If you're using streaming on a surround system versus TV speakers, it's a huge... Oh, difference. massive, yeah. And it's only as good as the limiting factor, the weakest link in the chain. Right. So yeah. if the speakers aren't uh, revealing enough, then you're not going to know the difference right. in Correct. quality. Um, so, yeah, on the HTPC side, I, I that was worth it to me. And, uh, well, having the full uh, quality was worth it to me. But then I didn't want to deal with discs and getting up yeah. putting them in I, I don't know it just feels it's it's a first world problem but uh it's one of those i feel like everything else is just so convenient and then this feels like i'm going back in time to <laughs> like put discs in and it was like you know what and and i really wanted to back everything up anyways right um that's the best so thing do. yeah and then i have a plex i did a plex server so i can watch all my movies you know throughout the house in full quality i can also watch them off site then it's streaming but uh you know, so uh, Mad VR, that was just something that I saw at Rusty's, and I also saw at uh, Vern's. Vern's, yeah. And and then they the Mad VR PC, the home theater PC. Home theater PC, yeah, yeah correct. Not the not the Envy. Not the Envy. Um, and I saw how big of a difference it made. Um, I I got to see firsthand because they had it up and running. Um, Rusty's got the, got the Envy and then Vern's got HTPC. Yeah. And, uh, so I got to see firsthand what it could do. And I was like, okay, well, I'm already building the HTPC. Yeah. I've already Let got me just go ahead and, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, I just needed a GPU, uh, mm -hmm. cause it, I built the PC first without a GPU. So, um, found a good price on a 3080 and, um, got that up and running and very much, very pleased with that. Um, Cody. Uh, the reason I'm using Cody is uh, really it's just for the interface for f this room uh, locally. It's not, I'm not using any of the streaming uh, features of it. It's literally just, I like their user interface for uh, scrolling through titles and finding what you want to watch in, in here. Um, you know, there's others. I tried J River, which was, which was good. Um, I just, I really preferred Cody's interface. And it was a real challenge getting that set up to run mad vr mm -hmm. um but i did finally i got it all up and running but uh so that cody yeah plex i could talk about plex and why i chose it versus mb or, or jellyfin but it's really that sum that one up as uh ease of use yeah it's very um, very easy the the plex to me still has other than kaleidoscape but i mean we're talking about like stream um 
software. Yeah. Like Plex, just their user interface is just. It's just easy and yeah. it, to set up the server was super simple. And yeah. uh, that was another thing, uh, make MKV to rip my disk. That one reading through the forums, it's seems very, very complicated. It's so easy. Yeah. And once it was you, like, once you do it a couple of times, yeah. it's like, oh, this is, I mean, I like can, just yeah. go to the store, get you the right drive, you know, make sure yeah. it's the right model number, spend 50 bucks on that. And then literally use the because you read you read through there and you're like oh command line prompts <laughs> well if you just scroll down a little bit it's like oh no there's an installer yeah and so you just click install and it's flashed in five minutes and you're I've good to go using that for and probably 10 plus years i mean yeah. it's super easy and and i was telling someone last night i need to just go ahead and support and pay for it because i've been using it and i've been meaning to do it i always forget yeah. but you can even use that pretty much indefinitely for free if yeah. you just keep updating the the little trial code, but it's, yeah. it's super simple. And even Vernon was telling me that, and I've heard it, and I I, I guess I just need to do a little bit more research. But you can e even make ISO files through making correct. TV. Yes, so you if can. You want to do it that way? You can do that. Keep all your Blu-ray menus, your you know deleted scenes, extra stuff, all that stuff. Correct. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, Mad VR. I, th I thought was really worth it. Um the having the well basically here's what i really wanted so i like apple tv okay. really like the interface for streaming and that's what i was coming from right right so then i come to this and i'm like well i want an interface like that and the only way to do that was to rip my discs yeah. and use something like cody mm -hmm. to be able to flip through my library search organize my you know and, and oh also keep track of uh um, you know, where you watch history where and where at, you're yeah. at. So that was something that just like, I, that's what I really wanted. So all those factors, that's why I have an HTPC. So what about your, your seats? So you got three. So these, the yep. yeah. Where'd you get these from? I got these, uh, Facebook marketplace. Yeah. Actually this guy they was selling look, them. They still look pretty new. They were brand new in box. Oh, so he hadn't even opened them. He hadn't even opened them. Well, he had opened them, but, but he hadn't he hadn't used them. Um and he now they were a couple of years old and he had moved and they he's like they just been sitting in my garage. Yeah. And uh <laughs> got yeah, so got these basically brand new for seven hundred bucks. Wow. <laughs> and what what brand is this? So this is Octane. Okay, yeah, they um, make some good seats. I've seen them. So man, seven hundred bucks. Seven hundred bucks. Is, that might be the biggest steal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these these theater chairs aren't cheap, and I know I have different brands that have different prices, but yeah, these aren't cheap, man. Yeah, these are some these are some nice, comfortable seats. I saw it pop up on, yeah, you know, I, I think that's a common uh, uh, problem with most guys is scrolling through marketplace, you know, <laughs> like, um, but just scrolling through marketplace and pop these popped up, and I was like right then and there like i've, I've got to buy these because uh yeah because they don't they don't stay on you the you see something like that on facebook you it's, it's have gone, to yeah it's gone pretty jump fast. on it and these and so these are manual correct they are manual got um accessory port here. yep so i can add you know trays and and uh they have other things like popcorn balls and stuff but a uh, phone holder tablet holders okay. which uh i will end up doing right now i'm not because my son comes in here all the time 14 month old and <laughs> If I have a, my tablet sitting here, he's just going to yank it off. So, <laughs> All right. So does your, does your wife share your, do, is she supportive or is she just tolerant? I always like to ask people that. She's, you find different answers with it. She is actually, so she, she was tolerant. She's actually supportive now. Awesome. Um, and it wasn't until I got, because when I first started this, I had a TV. Okay. Um, and it wasn't until I got the projector and got this set up and, She's like, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's literally just, she's, I got, she goes, I see what you mean. Like, <clears throat> it was well, funny. So we were watching a show that she really likes. Um, I forget the name of it. It's a, it's a, not, not my jam. <laughs> Chick flick. Yeah. Um, but anyways, the next day while I was at work, she texts me cause she didn't know how to work it, everything in here. And I was still working on it. Didn't have it like nice and I've got it more streamlined now yeah. uh, with uh HT web remote, but she texts me while I'm at work and she was in the living room on the TV watching it. Watch this <laughs> yeah. And she was like, yeah, this is not very good. That's She's hilarious. like, can we watch that some more when we get, when you get home? I was like, sure. <laughs> so she's, yeah. she's supportive. That's and, awesome. uh, 
she's never once told me to turn it down. So, um, so that's, that's great. <laughs> that's awesome. So I guess to wrap things up, is there anything major or minor where you're like, if I could do this all over again, I would really change this or I would like to, or maybe I wouldn't do this. Um, well, I guess one thing where I was getting at on the HTPC is if you have the money, I, it's worth, it's, I know there's probably people out there who have, who can afford the Clyde escape in the, in the envy, um, and better on the fence. And then if you have the money and you're thinking about, well, maybe I'll just do HTPC. I would say, don't do that because yeah. I can't tell you the amount of, uh, troubleshooting and hours yeah. and hours I've spent on the computer <clears throat> trying to get everything to play nice and work. Whereas that's just plug and play. Plug and play. Yep. So yes, it's the it's high cost, but I mean you're paying for that convenience mm -hmm. is really yeah. what you, you know. Um, and, and so you're, you're also you're 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 paying for it, but you're also paying for a streamlined experience. Yes, and, it's and the not, experience it's not too. An experience where you're like the I've experience got to is with this. Yeah, I've got it. So yeah, it's it's plug it's and play price. And like yeah, if I had the money, I would do it too because I've seen the Mad VR in person many times. I saw it at yeah. your house. I saw it at Cedia, and it makes. An incredible, incredible difference. And also, you also yep. get the benefit of the uh, nonlinear stretch, stuff like that. Yep. Motion know, AI. AR, so it's if, if you can do it, do it. And I know there's still going to be some people that are going to be naysayers and they're like, no, it's not worth that much. And that's that's up to it's you. It's up to you. you know? Yeah. You know, everybody has a different budget, but don't, don't knock it if you haven't seen it. If you can go somewhere and try it out. Like he did, he did his own A/B testing, yeah. and he was like, "Okay, this is for me." He could have decided, you know what, streaming is okay. I'm okay with that. But yeah, do your research. Don't just rely on what other people are saying because until you actually see it or experience it, it's it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, and can then you, uh, oh, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. You no, you go ahead. Um, could you share? You told me a story. I think it'd be cool to share with Jordan because, like, you came to my house and then you were interested and then like yeah. became an enthusiast. And then you had some people over to your house, like on your oh. very first <laughs> theater showing. Can you tell him that story? Yeah. So uh, I had my my wife's cousin and her aunt uh, were over and um, they wanted to come check it out because they're like, we've heard you've been working nonstop on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Um, and, uh, and this is just some of its coincidence. Like I didn't realize that her cousin's actually a big movie buff. Really? Okay. Yeah. And, this, uh, this is your wife's cousin, my wife's okay. cousin. Yep. Yeah. So as soon as they came in, they were just like, wow. And then, uh, had they I, been here bef before and seen the room before? Yes. They okay. They, they visited right when we first moved in before there was anything in here. And then, uh, then after, and then I, they just walked in and were like, wow. And then I sat them down, you played some stuff, yet. not nothing okay. yet. And then played some stuff. And then. Uh, the one that's more surprising is like, okay, uh, was her aunt. Her aunt? Really? Her, well, it's her great aunt. She's okay. she's in her 60s, but she was just like, just mind blown. And, that's and, and we usually, was just like, like this is incredible. Usually, yes. They don't usually care about this stuff. So that was really cool that, you know, yeah, she was just, it's, she was basically mind blown. Yeah, she was, she's, she was just like, this is incredible. I'd never seen anything like this. She's like the, the picture, the just everything. And I'm like, now you see why I'm into this. Um, same thing with her cousin. And then now her cousin uh, keeps texting her like, hey, That's let's have a movie night. <laughs> Let me know. We have the movie night. Yep. Uh, that's, so, that's awesome though that you... Yeah, my neighbor, same thing. He came over and was just like, wow. So and I think, and that's something that me and Rusty were talking about. I think there's just... We know that there's a lot of home theater enthusiasts in our community, but yeah. outside of that, I don't think the majority of people in the world know that you can have an experience. No, I don't. As I didn't. Or better in your home, yeah. even if it's not like high end. Yeah. You get so you get five point one, seven point one. You get some speakers and a couple subs. Yeah. Maybe some Atmos, dude. Like it blows anything out of way from just looking at a TV and using the speakers and I oh, think yeah. people just don't know. And it's the yeah. same thing. Like with my friends, you know, I can't talk to them about it, but if there's a movie that's come out or they've seen it, they'll be like, Hey, uh, 
can we come over and watch this movie? I'm like, you don't have to ask, man. I mean, as long as I'm available, I'm just like, yeah. But I, I, I enjoy it when, when friends, and I had a friend recently, I'm supposed to get with him in a couple of weeks, but he came over and he was, I was telling Rusty that he came over for the first time after I had got everything, my, my room situated, and I put on Godzilla vs. Kong. And right when it started, my brother showed up. And so my brother showed up and he walked into the theater and he looked at my friend and he was like, hey, man, you're not you're not going to say anything to me. <laughs> he was like, sorry, man. He's just like, I'm just immersed in this experience. And that, I was just like, man, my heart. That's just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. And um, I guess I can I'll say a little bit about that. So, you know, I was always into to when I first found out I was into audio or home theater at all. Um, so I was about five okay. and, uh, my dad had just, we had a carport and he had just enclosed it. And that was, this was going to be the new living room. Gotcha. And, uh, I remember going with him to circuit city at the time and, uh, he bought him a, it was like a 55 inch rear projection. You know, this is pre, yeah. pre flat oh, panel. Cool. Yeah. Like a, a, ones that actually had decent speakers though, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. 55 inch, uh, it was like a Zenith. And then he bought a Sony, uh, sound uh, receiver with the Sony speakers is 5.1 channel with the sub. And I got that set up at home, but he would never turn it up loud. And, uh, so, uh, there's one day he was working out in the shop and I'm inside and I just couldn't help myself. I was like drawn to it like a squirrel and a bright object. And, uh, went and turned it on and, and cranked it. And, uh, that's pretty much when I knew, like I, I was into this, into audio, at least audio, but even the video. Um, and cause, uh, yeah, I just cranked it and was just in awe as a five-year-old. Um, till my dad came in and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, but that's when it started. Um, and then since then I've always had like, as a little kid, uh, growing up, I got my first stereo, like a Panasonic stereo. Um, and then I got some more speakers the next year for Christmas. Cause I told my mom I wanted more speakers and I wired them into the same input on the back oh, of the yeah. stereo. So it was just <laughs> stereo all around. I didn't, you know, I was a kid, but yeah, I had like trying to make surround sound in my room. And, uh, and then I got my first system that I bought myself, like a Sony home theater in a box. And yeah. then, I, I think we all know, started with that, man. Exactly. Sony home theater in a box and. I've told that story numerous times, but yeah, I, I bought that. I thought that was. Oh yeah. I thought I was. So my yeah. was like, that's jank. <laughs> and that's kind of when I yep. started doing my research and I was like, Oh my goodness, there's like a whole nother realm of this stuff. Yep. So. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's when I didn't realize until I went over to, to Rusty's house. What, I mean, I, at that point I had l figured out that mm -hmm. there was better stuff and I had heard, you know, I, my, one of my other friends has, a clip system in his home. It's just a, like a five one setup, but it, it sounded good. And so I learned the value of, of that versus my Sony home theater to box. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's way better. But then when I heard that at Rusty's house, it was just like on a just it's eye opening and completely just, just next level. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like you said, when it's uh, rivaling and beating uh commercial it's cinema, good, yeah. then you're like, Okay. Wow, you can do this at home? <laughs> I didn't know until I went to somebody else's house. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, it's it's a journey for people, man. Like, you just don't, it's hard for people to, I think it's hard also for people to understand if they haven't experienced it. Because you can talk about them, you know, like, because I know I have, you know, coworkers and stuff. They're like, yeah, my wife, she she doesn't care. She just watches the, the um, or uses the, the TV speakers. But then like, yeah, I got a sound bar. And she was like, Oh my goodness, this sounds so much better. It's like, see, I told you. Yes. <laughs> like there's a, doesn't matter what TV, TV in the bedroom, everything's going to have a sound bar yeah. for me. Like just can't do TV speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do TV speakers. If you absolutely can't afford it or do so, even if it's a sound bar, like I would never do yeah. a sound bar in my theater. I would, I don't, I would have one in my home, in my bedroom or something like that. Right. But even that's going to be better than your TV speakers. So. Hundred percent. Well, Rusty, man, you've got a beautiful home theater. We're gonna we're gonna fire it up and do some demos. But thank you for letting us come in here and take over and sharing your experience and helping others that are watching this that maybe think like, 
I can't do this or, you know, I don't have any, you know, handyman skills or I mean, I mean, I'm still I'm still impressed for four months. You went from even though you had a little bit of knowledge, you just yep. went gung ho and it's like I'm doing all of this <laughs> and you did it yourself. So yeah, mad props, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Let us know what you think about Rusty's Home Theater. And I've got two more to shoot after this. A couple hours later, I'm going to go shoot another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I've got one tomorrow. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.